Anyone who knows me knows I love music and I take it pretty serious. Uh, I built uh, this speaker you see here and a matching one on the other side. There's a couple subwoofers down here. You can just see the tops of. Uh, with the help of a couple friends, I, I built those. I arranged my office so that my chair is in the prime listening spot, right in, in the middle of those. And I end a lot of days just listening to music. Again, I, I really like it. And I think God's people have always liked music and, and realized, and God realizes how important it is. That's why an entire book of the Bible is the hymn book of the Old Testament. I'm talking about the book of Psalms. Uh, in one sense, you could consider it the original Christian music channel. Well, I hope you like this video over a psalm, and if so, then uh, if you do me a favor and click the thumbs up, uh, leave a comment, I always love that, and or share it on a social media site like Facebook, that would be a huge help. Thanks a lot. Psalm 65 starts out with the words, Praise is due you, O God. Raise your hand if you agree that's true. I can't see your hands, but I'm assuming they're up. Well, all right, raise your hand if you do it, if you actually praise God. You know, Psalms doesn't just say praises do God. The Psalms are full of people praising God, of saying praise you, God. The, the writings themselves, writing it down for them and other generations. This is, we're praising God. People are exhorted to join in. David leads the people in praising God. It's over and over throughout the Psalms. It's certainly here, the psalm that starts off, praises do you. David praises God here. And first, in the spiritual realm, things that God has done there, he praises him for who he is in light of that. He says, O you who hear prayer, to you shall all flesh come. When iniquities prevail against me, you atone for our transgressions. Blessed is the one you choose and bring near to dwell in your courts. So here's David thinking about God, <laughs> the creator of the universe, you hear our prayers. When someone talks, you listen. And God, the holy, perfect one, when we sin, you forgive us. You offer that forgiveness to believers. And God, you not only forgive us and hear us, you want us to be near. You draw us near. You want that relationship with us. David praises God for those spiritual things in light of those spiritual things. But then also at the end, he, David thinks of the physical blessings. In verses 12 and 13, he says, The pastures of the wilderness overflow. The hills gird themselves with joy. The meadows clothe themselves with flocks. The valleys deck themselves with grain. They shout and sing together for joy. David looks at the, the physical blessings, and he realizes they're from God, and he even personifies the physical elements as realizing they're from God. So having joy, praising God themselves. Well, you know, it's been hard to even as I've gone through this to totally distinguish between praising God and thanking God. The two really overlap. I suppose if you had to draw, make a distinction, you'd say you praise God for who he is. You thank him for what he's done. But again, how do you separate those? You know, I know who God is, his nature, in light of the things he's done. And so I thank him, I praise him. In the New Testament, it often focuses on thanking God. I, I know Colossians seven times in that book. We're told to be thankful, do things with thanksgiving. This is something important. And again, not just to agree, oh yeah, I know that's true, <laughs> praises do God, but to actually do it. Well, I always like to ask, what's it look like? What does it look like to praise God? Well, a little bit just like here. You know, journal it. Write down in your own journal, and I always encourage people to keep one of these, not only to help ingrain it at the time, but to look back later. Write down the things God has done that you're thankful for, and what you see about Him through that. His control and His love always are two big things. You know, if you're the kind, write a poem or write a song. Or just read a poem, read a song that someone else has done in praise of God. That's an element, too, just to reaffirm, yeah, I've seen that, too. God, I praise you. You know, you speak to other people. That certainly should be a part of our being a witness, you know, to believers to help encourage them and to unbelievers to help them just realize God does work in my life. I'm so thankful. Here's what I see about him in light of this. It should obviously be an element of our worship service. 
Now, what do we do in our worship that praises God, that acknowledges who he is? That should always be there. And then definitely a part of our prayers. You know, I think you know, prayer isn't just, okay, God, here's what I'd like. And even here's what I need. Here's what I'd like for someone else. Here's their needs. Part of our prayer needs to be praising God. As a matter of fact, that's where we need to start with that focus on God, who he is in light of what he's done. This is something that certainly comes up over and over, not only in the Psalms throughout the Bible, and like everything, I not only need to agree it's true, say, yeah, it should happen, I should do it, I need to do it. 